Hello everyone, welcome to today's video where we will be diving into the fascinating world of electronics. Specifically, we are going to unravel the concept of half-wave rectification, a fundamental process used in converting alternating current AC to direct current DC. So if you are curious about how this process works and its applications, you are in the right place. Let's get started. Let's uh, discuss about the basics of AC and DC. Before we delve into the half-wave rectification, let's quickly refresh our memory about alternating current AC and direct current DC. AC is a type of electrical current that periodically changes direction, creating a waveform that alternates between positive and negative values. On the other hand, DC is constant flow of electrons in one direction, maintaining a steady voltage level. Now imagine we want to convert AC to DC using a simple technique known as half-wave rectification. In this process, we use a component called diode to allow current to flow in one direction. A diode is a semiconductor device that acts as a one-way valve for electrical current. It allows current to flow from one anode to cathode when the anode is at the higher potential than the cathode. However, it blocks the current flows in the opposite direction. Now, let's see how a half-wave rectifi rectifier circuit works. We have an AC input and we place a diode in series with it, along with a load register. If an alternating voltage is applied across the diode during the positive half cycle, then the diode will conduct passing current and during the negative half cycle, the diode will not conduct, blocking the flow of the current. Then conduction through the power diode only occurs during the positive half cycle and is therefore unidirectional, DC as shown. Very often, when rectifying an alternating voltage, we wish to produce a steady and continuous DC voltage free from any voltage variation or ripple. One way of doing this is to connect a large value capacitor across the output voltage terminal in parallel with the load register, as shown below. This type of capacitor is known commonly as reservoir or smoothing capacitor. When rectification is used to provide a direct voltage or DC, power supply from an alternating AC source, the amount of ripple voltage can be further reduced by using a larger value capacitors, but there are limits both on cost and size of the type of smoothing capacitors used. For a given capacitor value, a greater load current, that means smaller load resistance, will discharge the capacitor more quickly and so increases the ripple obtained. Then for single phase half-wave rectifier circuit using a power diode is not very practical to try and reduce the ripple voltage by capacitor smoothing alone. In this instance, it will be more practical to use full wave rectification instead. In practice, and the half-wave rectifier is used more often in lower power, low power applications because of their major disadvantages being the output amplitude is less than the input amplitude. There is no output during the negative half cycle. So half of the power is wasted and the output is pulsed DC, resulting in excessive ripple. To overcome these disadvantages, a number of power diodes are connected together to produce a full wave rectifier as discussed in the next tutorial video. And now comes to the application. Half-wave rectifier might seem simple, but it finds applications in various areas. It's often used in low-cost power supplies, battery charging circuits, and certain signal dem demodulation processes. And there you have it, a brief overview of half-wave rectification. This process, although straightforward, plays a crucial role in converting AC to a pulsating DC signal. Now let's move forward to the simulation part. We are going to simulate this half-wave rectifier circuit in MATLAB Simulink. For the simulation part, let's click on the MATLAB first. And when the MATLAB is opened, you can see this Simulink option. You just need to click on the Simulink option and wait for some time. So when this Simulink part open, you will see this library browser then click on this library browser and after waiting for some time you will see all these libraries beside your window and then from here you can actually search all the items that you need for your circuit like we are going to need a scope for this simulation part where we will actually see the uh, output web shape so here the scope after searching it you can press enter and you can actually click this and uh, drag this scope to this part or you can actually right click on the scope and then add to the file name and if you have saved this file with any other name you will see that at first option but if we are going to uh, choose all other elements we need to actually go to simscape and we are going to actually use this electrical folder 
and after we go to this electrical option we are seeing this specialized power system and inside this specialized power system we are going to find all our components inside this same library and then for, from here we are going to choose the sources at first here you can see AC voltage source and after collecting the AC voltage source I'm going to close this one because we don't need any other sources for this half wave rectifier circuit and after that we are going to choose the power electronics and from here we can get our diode you can see this one okay so we don't need anything else from power electronics we can go to the passive element and from here we need a register or for that we can actually choose this parallel RLC branch or you can choose series RLC branch also we just need to eliminate the other L and C and just need to keep the resistance R and then we are going to connect them by clicking on this sides of these uh, blocks and after that we can actually rotate it by pressing ctrl plus R or we can right click on this and we will find an option inside the format for rotating it here you can see ctrl plus R will also do the same thing so after that we can actually see that our half wave rectifier circuit is done we just need to change those values here you see branch type RLC we just need to click on R and we can give 1000 ohm resistance and now we are done for this and here is our source okay we need to actually change some values inside our diode here you can see forward voltage we need to do it zero okay we need to make it zero and here we need to make the snubber resistance and snubber capacitance INF infinite okay for infinite we just need to write INF okay I have made a small mistake here and then you can press ok or apply okay you can see everything is actually connected here but we need to actually um, find the voltage output voltage or input voltage right we can actually so that we can compare but you can see that the scope only have one wire to connect but we cannot measure the voltage with one where like right we need positive and negative so for that we are actually going to need an extra component that is called voltage measurement component that actually measure the voltage of two different point between two different point and we are going to copy another one because we need one for input voltage that we are going to measure around the source AC voltage source and another one to measure the output voltage around this resistance and after that we can now see that we actually getting one wear from each of these voltage measurement so now we can actually use this scope to actually uh, check our output but here you can see we uh, if we want to actually check uh, both of these output and input in the same scope we need to just modify it a little bit so we can actually open this scope and after that we can go to this setting option parameter setting here if we see that number of input port is one we just need to make it two and after doing that we can actually see there are two ports now and we can just connect them the first one will be our input and the second port will be used for our output signal okay after we have connected both of these now we can do is okay we need to change a value here you can see the time time is 10 okay let's run the thing first we are going to get an error and that is because of power power GUI we have not used it you can see the error message the diagram must contain a power GUI block you need to actually understand those error messages so that you can uh, you can actually um, remove the error or correct your own circuit okay so after we get this power GUI block here we just need to change the time or we can run it go back to simulation and run it but you will see that we cannot actually understand anything from that circuit because we have given the time uh, for z from 0 to 10 let's see how that looks like after compilation is done we can just click on double click on this scope you see there are so many signals here from 0 to 10 that is where we cannot actually understand what is happening here properly other whether the half wave rectification was actually successfully done or not so here the time is actually the problem why is that and why are actually what value we need to give here how do we understand that if we click on this ac voltage source you see the frequency is 60 hertz we know that 
time period is equals to 1 by f right so if we do this calculation then we get a point zero two less than point zero two so if we give point zero six we'll get three signals uh, complete signals so that is why we are actually using point zero six you can use point zero eight point one something like that okay okay then you can see this blue line this is actually the output but if we want to separate these two input and output is showing on the same signal but we want to actually separate them then what we need to do is we need to open the scope again and here beside this parameter option you can see this four blocks and here you can actually choose i have chosen a one column but two rows and now we are seeing up and down like this the input and then output the positive half cycle is there but the negative half cycle becomes zero for this circuit now you can see that we are getting the pulsating dc right so for that we can actually add another capacitor here parallel to this load to actually get the pure dc value and for that we need a capacitor we are getting another parallel rlc branch and then changing the branch type and then we have given one faraday uh, for this capacitor capacitor value will be given one and then after connecting this if we run again you will see the change here you can see okay let me give 10 into 10 to the power minus 3 for the first value that means 0 0.01 okay and if we run here then after that you can see we are getting a straight value at 100 volt we are not getting the pulsating dc like we have um, seen previously when there was no capacitor attached to that uh, parallel to that load i think you can understand after seeing this if we actually change this uh, capacitor value we uh, if we give a smaller value then you will see that this uh, if we give a smaller value of capacitance you will see that the result is actually not perfectly dc there will be still some um, you can see the rise time and the fall time or charging and discharging time of this capacitor okay if, if we can see if we the, um, decrease the value then we are getting like this and if we increase it gradually little by bit little by little then you will see it okay let me just take this value here and modify it here okay so i have given 1 into 10 to the power minus 6 now let me give 10 into 10 to the power minus 6 and run it again you can see the value of change here it is gradually changing and we are actually going to eliminate all these ripples let me give 1000 into 10 to the power minus 6 and if we run again you see it is almost close to zero sorry it is al almost close to dc voltage there is a little change here little drop here and there but it is actually close to the dc voltage level and if we go in uh, if we increase it again okay now we are getting a perfect value like we have seen previously you see this is the perfect dc level we can use it for our circuit now but that's all for today thank you see you in the next video where we will be learning about new circuits